this is an additional video. This uh, actually covers things, a few things that I had mentioned earlier. Just want to make sure that I uh, got these across, and I've added an example. When I was talking about atomic number earlier, this is the number of protons in each atom of a given element. An example I have is sodium, with the chemical symbol Na. It's got the number 11 and the number 23 next to it. And you can look at your periodic table if you uh, scroll through your notes or look that up online. The 11 is the smaller number in uh, amount, and that's going to be the atomic number. That tells you the number of protons in each nucleus of the sodium atom. Every sodium atom would have 11 protons in it. 23 is the atomic weight. That's the whole number. Uh, there's actually a decimal, I think it's 22 point something, you round it to the nearest whole number, which is 23. That's the atomic weight. That's the number of neutrons plus the number of neutrons. So, one of the things I would expect you to be able to do is to calculate the number of neutrons if you're given the atomic number and atomic weight of a given element. And here you would take 23 minus 11, that would give you 12, and that's the number of neutrons in the average sodium atom. So we know the atomic number, the atomic weight, you can calculate the number of neutrons. It's not always half the number of protons, usually close, but not necessarily half. I talked a little bit about isotopes. Isotopes are a different atoms of a given element, different because of their atomic weight. Hydrogen is a good example. Hydrogen has three isotopes, protium, deuterium, and tritium. Protium atoms make up over 99% of hydrogen atoms, and they contain just one uh, subatomic particle in the nucleus, and that's the proton. They contain no neutrons. Deuterium would have twice the mass of a protium atom because each deuterium atom has a neutron in the nucleus. Du means two, two subatomic particles in the nucleus. <coughs> Excuse me. Tritium atoms have three particles in the nucleus, the proton, and two neutrons. All these hydrogen atoms have one proton, but they have differing numbers of neutrons. Tritium happens to be radioactive, so it's described as a, a radioisotope. It's a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. Sometimes it's used in, uh, in the face of watches and clocks so that they glow in the dark, and uh, sometimes in night sights of firearms so that uh, you're able to see the site in complete darkness. A common radioisotope that's used in biology would be carbon-14. I've worked with that. Sometimes it's used to trace carbon, where it's going in cells and in tissues, and what uh, it's being incorporated into, what kind of molecules or compounds it's being uh, formed into. There are other types of radioisotopes. Uh, argon, uh, potassium, sometimes are used for dating rocks. <coughs> problem with that is uh, generally when you take it to be dated they want to know what strata it's come from. It's not as if you can just take a rock and they can date it accurately and there are a lot of questions whether the potassium argon dating method is, is accurate in and of itself. Same is true with carbon-14. There are instances of where uh, living organisms have tested to be thousands of years old by carbon-14 dating so you have to, to take that carefully as you look at those. <coughs> Electron shells I talked about um, the periods of the periodic table representing the shells of electrons and uh, the, this is a way of describing the electron arrangement around the nucleus. Uh, the first shell contained a maximum of two electrons and hence you see hydrogen and helium in the first period. Once that first shell is filled with two electrons, then electrons are put into the second shell. The second shell can hold a maximum of eight electrons, and once that shell is filled, then the third shell begins to be filled. Now some interesting things happen after uh, the third shell is filled. You get into a fourth, uh, uh, the 4D sublevel, uh, or the D sublevel, and I don't uh, talk about that in this class. We talked about chemistry, I talk about the D and the F sublevels, but here just understanding the third shell, that's the largest we'll talk about. When it has eight electrons, that outermost shell is then full. Keep in mind, helium has a full outer shell, 
when it has two electrons because that first shell can only hold two electrons. But all the other noble gases are f have full outer shells, second, third, fourth, whatever it might be. They have eight electrons in their outermost shell. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, be sure and let me know.